Okay, guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in science, astronomy, and telescopes. Well, at least I hope one of them. So I haven't shown you guys looking through the telescope in a little while, well, actually a long while, so why don't we do that? It's a nice spring, uh, April, and it's a little bit coolish in the night, and it's a little bit windy, but I'll take it. So let's look at two clusters. One is probably rated, I would say, at least uh, top 10. And then I would say the other one is probably about top 20-ish uh, type of thing. They're very good clusters. I know most of you have already seen them a thousand times, but maybe for the newer people, and maybe if you guys that have seen it a hundred times, you can maybe put some of the comments in on how you see it, what type of telescope and eyepiece combination, and maybe what type of sky condition do you have? Uh, a boreal zone, you know, one to a nine, and what size type of thing, because I guess it could vary depending where you are. And maybe some of the new people, it'll give them hints on how they're gonna see it with their telescope, depending where they are. So let's go to this map over here. Uh, one of my favorite maps. One of my favorite maps because it just folds down Literally, it weighs, I don't know, half an ounce or less. And it's waterproof. It's big, and it's called the Orion Deep Map 600. It has, uh, like, 600 of the best objects out there. So, first thing, let's go see. In Cancer, now, hopefully you guys can see that looks like a Y, upside down Y. Now, Cancer is a little hard to see, especially in light pollution, because even the brightest stars are not uh, really bright. And I would say even in the country, it's still, you can see it, but it's kind of dim. So it's kind of like, if you could see Gemini, the twins, there's Castor, Pollux, that's the, the two heads, uh, the male and female, that's their arms holding each other, his body and if you look close you can see his legs there's her legs so it's like a two kids holding hands type of thing but if you keep going in this direction it's probably around 20 degrees roughly you'll get to the beehive the problem is there's no bright stars there i have star hopped to it so if you have like a finder scope or like a low low power uh anything 10 power to 15 power you could try to star hop and see if you can get it i mean it's almost kind of not quite in the same you know straight down would be more here so it's kind of like straight down and a little bit that way or just in a little bit of an angle but anyway one of the most nicest um open clusters is called the m44 the beehive and then in the same constellation not too far away M67, which is a little bit dimmer and smaller. Uh, but again, if you can find that star, then it's very close to it. But from the city, it's not very, you probably won't even see it. Okay, so I have, let's go outside here. Haven't showed you guys this in a while, but I got the Skywatcher 12 inch daw out here. And, um, you know, again, it's clear, it's a little windy, um, and it's just getting kind of dark now. So we could probably leave this cooling for a little tiny bit more. It's only been out here for less than 10 minutes. Now, normally, I don't let them cool. There's the bus. Um, I don't normally let them cool for super long, especially if it's for open clusters or deep sky type of thing. And, um, you know, because it's not like we're trying to see fine, detail like on the planets or something like that uh you know the cluster is going to look fine so even if we leave it for half an hour it should be okay now i don't know if you guys remember this is a homemade shroud uh, that i built for it um, if you have a dobson and you don't want to pay uh you know i i think one for this size scope is probably around 165 dollars before tax canadian might be about 120 dollars i'm guessing American so if you don't want to spend that much and you want to spend maybe 20 to 
$30 maximum on a homemade one, and I even have extra fabric. Uh, I showed a video on this, uh, if probably going back about seven to eight months, but uh, if you guys want to lo look back, probably find it and then tell me what you think or if that helped you. It'll probably save you a lot of money. Probably at least three to four times minimum with the retail ones. The retail ones might look, I think, slightly better, but to say four times, you know, it, it's a good amount. Okay, so let it cool down and a little bit more and let uh, it get a little darker and then we'll take a look at those two clusters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to put the cell phone to the eyepiece and show you guys what both of them look like because I haven't done that in a while. And maybe, again, you experienced people, tell us what you use and what power do you use and what type of uh, sky pollution area are you from and you new people, try it out. Okay, this 38 millimeter eyepiece, I can just barely fit in the frame because it really won't fit in the eyepiece adapter. Here we go. So see how big it is? I have to actually move it. There we go. So it's huge. Uh, I can't get far enough because uh, this eyepiece barrel goes out. Uh, the only way is maybe with a two inch eyepiece. Okay, so now I'm using a two inch, 56 millimeter Mead Super Palazzo, the 56. I think the focus needs a little bit better. There we go. So there, there's the beehive. Now this is a big scope. The beehive can really use uh, like a, those are just reflections now, the orange. I don't know why now I got those, because I moved. Okay. But anyway, the beehive's a very nice cluster, as you guys can see. And uh, there we go. This is with a um, Mead 56 millimeter eyepiece. So anything small, 80 millimeter, any type of wide field telescope, as long as you can point to it. The good news is Mars is about 10 degrees away from it, so it should be easy to pinpoint it. And as you can see, it's a little bit dispersed. Now, why don't we go to the next cluster, M67, and I should be able to use an inch and a quarter. Uh, the 32 or 38 should be okay because this one's really huge. I barely fit it. So it was, uh, I used the adapter one for the two inch. And I just barely fit the two inch. Let me show you. Here, let's look at the screen here. So if you look at Mars, it's right here. And it's just a little bit up. It's not that far away. You should be able to find it with a finder scope or a low power. So, so anyway, so try that and there we go. So you just have, if you have a star sense, you know, you just go from there. And then it should turn green and then there you go. Okay, so there's, here's my setup right now. So there's the focus. I don't have the star sense going on. The ride gel is off. Um, there's the two inch eyepiece. And then I have the move, shoot, move. This is also the back spacing I have. It's about an inch from, because remember 56 millimeter has a lot of eye relief. So if I go any closer, the circle is gonna be smaller. I wish this guy had a dual speed focus. Okay, so with a 32 millimeter, I just barely saw it. Remember, I got a lot of street lights here, so it's kind of tough, and it's much, much dimmer than the Beehive. So currently I have a 18 millimeter, super wide. It's a nice cluster as well, but it's much dimmer than the Beehive, but definitely worth a look. So I have an 18 millimeter. You could probably start with like a 20, I guess like a 26, you could probably see it. Remember, I'm in a zone eight. I have a lot of street lights, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hitting me. Otherwise, if I was more dark adaptive, would, would benefit me more. And I'm zooming in 1.1 time, so you can see it. If I don't zoom in, I guess that's still okay too. Anyway, there we go, guys. So there's two open clusters that are like amazing. They're not super hard to find. Uh, right now, um, 
I don't have it on the star sense because I took it off so we can take a look at um, this guy here so I can put the cell phone to the eyepiece uh, and that's it so anyway guys like comment and subscribe I'll see you guys on the next video if you know anybody getting into the hobby share my channel if you guys want to be a member I do videos a lot of times and a lot of those videos are the eyepiece to the telescope on the members format so if you'd like to see more of those I have a lot more of those there anyway guys why not you why not me